All right, welcome to 21 Boom. I am Coach McCoy, and today we are starting our first seminar in a line of fitness seminars for 2021 2022 season. And today it is a Fitness 101 seminar on start moving safely. So, guys, this is the easiest, the easiest, the most simple, the straightforward seminar that's ever been done in our lives, right? It's about exercise, starting properly. And of course, everybody knows how to exercise, right? But if you look at some data, it may tell a different story. Now, this is a little, a little mystery here, right? So we all know how to exercise, but do we? According to the Harvard School of Public Health, by 2030, we're gonna have 50% obesity rates in our society. Wow, staggering. Center for Disease Control estimates that 80% of our society is not meeting the minimal recommendations for exercise. That's staggering. So we've got a little issue here, don't we? It seems so simple, yet the data is proving otherwise. And today we're gonna have as much fun as we can. We're gonna do some hands-on things, and we are going to absolutely provide some magic because movement is magic. Movement is something that we want to absolutely take advantage of. Our bodies are designed to move. So we're gonna have fun today doing some deep dives on some things. But getting back to our mystery, right? Sim simple stuff, simple stuff, exercise, right? It's the physician recommendation, go for a walk. And that's great, no doubt about it. However, we as a society are failing. So we're failing, why are we failing? So why is this happening? Well, I wanna kind of present three concepts today and we're gonna take a deep dive on one of them. The first concept is I'd like you to reframe fitness. Right now, there's a lot of body image emphasis, right? We might want to exercise to look better. Unfortunately, that's not providing a solution. We also might be looking at exercise as this high intensity thing that we have to participate in and just crush ourselves. And obviously that's not providing an outcome that we're seeing is desirable. Instead, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to reframe fitness and exercise as a way to help you feel better. That's it, just feel better. If you can feel better, you feel great, it's worth every ounce of time and effort that you can provide. Number two, I'd like to provide you with the key to exercise. And now the key is personalization. And that's what we're diving deep on today. The third little concept that I'd like to present is really behavior change, and that's closing a habit loop. Now, that concept is from Charles Duhigg in a book called The Habit Loop from his book in 2012. And the whole concept here is that everything is this neurological pathway to make things super easy for our brains to instinctively execute. So with this habit loop, we end habit loops with rewards. We end sessions, workouts with a victory pose. And a victory pose is the reward. It's where you feel that euphoria, you tie into feeling great, feeling amazing. So the cue in essence on a habit loop is the first step, the response is the second, and the reward is the third. So we've talked about the reward, what is the cue? Well, the cue in this case could be not feeling your best, not feeling like you have energy. The response is exercise, and then the reward is feeling good. Do you see how that habit loop is going to absolutely change behavior? So when you don't feel good, when you don't feel like you have you know, a ton of energy or whatever it may be, there are a variety of feelings that you could have, sensations, you're going to respond by exercising, and of course, you're gonna solidify with the reward. And that gets into our brand promise, which we will do today, which is identifying progress. So we're going to identify progress today because we want to do that in every session. And why not transition that into our seminars as well? So this will be a lot of fun, magical stuff. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about our deep dive. Now, our deep dive in creating a safe exercise program, like the starting point, really starts with personalization, like I mentioned. It also kind of dovetails into moving the body the way the body is designed to move. So those are all great and important concepts that we want to do a little bit deeper dive on. And in a seminar, we can do that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this hands-on so that you're not just sitting and watching me. 
I want you to be involved. I want you to actually go through this experience. Now, what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a few assessments just to kind of see how you are moving to determine what it is that we might do with you. And for those of you who are proficient within some of these things, that's great. You can still benefit from what we're doing. All of us can because there's a lot of neurological stuff that, uh, that, that we can grease the groove on. All right, so we're going to start with you starting on your back. So I want everyone to go ahead and lie on your back. Okay, we're gonna go through a series of these things. We're gonna get up and down off the ground a couple times, but I do wanna do them in a set order because these are what we call targets. So these targets are in essence milestones. So I want you to go ahead and lie on your back and we're gonna do an active straight leg raise right from Gray Cook and Lee Burton and the functional movement systems. So this is all deeply rooted stuff in terms of the proven systems that we follow. This is not me guessing, this is taking it right from the godfather of human functional movement. So I want you to lie on your back and I want you to keep your legs straight and locked, arms down to the side. Let's tuck your toes towards your knees and let's slowly bring one leg up as far as you can. Nice and slow, don't get, don't get too fast here. Nice and slow and just do what you can do. So try not to compensate. Try not to you know, bring your knee off the ground that's on the ground. Try not to bend the knees and just do exactly what you can do. And try to estimate how far up you're going in degrees. So if you just did your right leg, bring that down again and just do that one more time. Again, if I had a goniometer, a goniometer is going to measure angles, right? Here's a goniometer. This is a 90 degree angle straight up from the ground, right? If you were at about half that, it's about 45 degrees. So just get an estimate of how far up you can take that leg without bending the knee, right? So if you bend the knee, you can get a little higher. So I don't want you to bend the knee. Just do what you can do. And now let's go to the other side and let's do the same thing. Nice and slowly go as far up as you can. How far can you bring that? Is it 45 degrees? Is it, you know, 70 degrees, is it 90 degrees? You know, how far can you take that? So now you have a couple of measures. Let's go ahead and stand. And now as we go through these things, remember the objective here is to feel good, look great, perform your best, all those things, right? Functional movement is where it's at. It's how the body's designed to move. So these are little bits and pieces that are going to end up helping us do things like running and jumping and you know shaping and toning and all the things that you guys want. So the next assessment that we're going to incorporate is what we would call milestone two. So the active straight leg raise was milestone one. It's the foundational element for everything because that's all hip core neural sequencing. And now we're gonna get into more core zone stuff and this particular assessment is going to measure your balance. So I want you to go ahead and stand and I want you to bring one leg off the ground so that your hip and knee are at 90 degree angles and just hold that there for like 10 seconds. Good, and just pay attention to, you know, if you're struggling or if your foot is really digging into the ground hard, like a talon, uh, and let's go ahead and do the other side as well. And you can kind of assess whether one side feels better than the other, whether there are any imbalances. Good, just holding that there for like 10 seconds. Excellent. So we would, in essence on that, that is mimicking a, a, a hurdle step in the functional movement systems. We choose to do a quick on the fly single leg stance, uh, very similar. Uh, we try to emphasize balance in that particular milestone. So. That's something that you might want to note. Hey, was my balance proficient? Am I proficient with milestone number two? Uh, now, the, the specifics with that are really somewhat subjective based upon the practitioner. You know, we want to make sure that you're aesthetically, like it looks aesthetically pleasing to the eye, right? This looks pretty solid, right? If I'm, if I'm you know, wobbling around, then, then, then it's not. So, so it's not as crystal clear as the, let's just say the active straight leg raise. And the final little assessment that we'll do within the core zone, because there are three in this first core zone, is a toe touch. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna turn to the side so you can see me. Let's keep your feet, you know, uh, somewhat close. 
Uh, stand tall at the top. You can extend your arms to the ceiling. And then let's go ahead and see if you can touch your toes. So if you can touch your toes, then you're proficient with a toe touch. If you can't touch your toes, then you're not. And that might just mean that that's something that you would want to work on. The ability to hinge and control your hips is all continuing to, you know, integrate in that hip core sequencing. So we have really three ways to identify deficiency at a super foundational level, which then gives us the ability to build your body logically instead of just guessing instead of just, you know, oh, go for a walk. And, and a walk is great. I'm not minimizing that. We want you to walk. But when you're talking about these types of aspects, we're really talking about the concept of strategic movement. It's strategically designed to move your body the way the body is designed to move, build it so that you're injury resilient, so that you move better, so you are stronger, you're functioning better, everything. So it's very strategic. And one milestone then builds on the other. So you do want to go in a sequence. Generally speaking, the one, the two, the three, it's all going to potentially bleed together within an actual session, but it gives you the participant and it gives like a coach that's working with you very specific if this then that concepts so that is basically a wrap for the first zone of those three milestones right the active straight leg raise the single leg stance and the toe touch now i mentioned that the reason why we're doing this is a little bit more global right it's to squat and and a, a kettlebell swing and deadlift and 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 play basketball and play tennis and and hike and, and shape until i mentioned all that so let's go to one higher level movement and this is just milestone eight and it's a squat let's just see how the squat is impacted by what we do today so i want you guys to go ahead and position your feet comfortably you know into a squat stance so it might be a little i'm just going to guide you a little bit but ultimately i want you to feel like it's biomechanically comfortable uh, we would generally recommend a little bit wider than shoulder width stance your toes are going to just kind of point out a little bit just again comfortable for you i don't want to tell you exactly where they should be because i want you to kind of feel your body i also want you to then take a dowel or a pretend dowel if you have a dowel great right if you have a dowel you can absolutely use it you're going to position it above your head with your squat stance and i want you to give me the deepest squat you can And this is right again from the functional movement systems. It's the deep squat assessment. So if you are familiar with the FMS, if you're not proficient with a squat, you're scoring a one, right? If you're proficient, you're a two. And if you're not proficient, you're a three. And so any of those threes, even a two, we want to clean up, but we want to really make sure that if you have uh, any type of issues then then if you're if you're in that one category we definitely want to clean up clean up the, the squat pattern and I hope I mentioned that right but the, the but the one is the low score one is the low score two is the proficient three is you're moving really well so I think I may have messed that up a little bit um, okay so what we're looking for here is we're looking for that dowel to remain directly above your head as you get into a deep squat and you're gonna keep your heels on the ground as well so just make sure your squat is proficient uh, if it's not then correct it and we're gonna see how some of this stuff impacts your squat today so excellent now that's the baseline that we're gonna go through we could also do things like a walking baseline and there's a million things that, that we can do uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to target milestone number one. It's the foundation, like I said. So what we're going to do is we're going to do things and we're going to reassess to see if there's any progress. So you already know what your active straight leg raise was initially. And now we're going to determine based upon your response to what it is that we do, whether there is progress or not. So you and I'm not going to ask everyone necessarily so that you share but I do want you to share internally. I want you to be able to say, yes, that impacted me positively, or no, that did not. Because again, all of us are gonna be different. So we're gonna tap into some neural resets, and we're gonna tap into some um, uh, wake-up drills. We're gonna tap into some, just, just kind of resetting the central nervous system. So that's more of a global effect. So let's go ahead and let's have you lie on your back again. Here we go. Everyone's gonna go to their back. The first thing we're gonna do is do a central nervous system reset, and this, is really powerful so body on the ground on your back and just breathe and relax good we're gonna take like let's take like a, a 45 to 60 seconds and just keep the tongue on the top of the roof of the mouth inhale and exhale through the nose and I want you to breathe rhythmically 
calmly, heart-centered, and just relax your body. Good. Just be present with your breath. This is a first level neural reset as well as it's a central, um, central nervous system reset. So breathe, relax. Think about how well you move, how grateful you are to take a little time to prioritize your health and do some deep dives on this stuff. Good. Your glutes should be relaxed. If the glutes are engaged, your toes are probably straight up. Just let those toes flop to the side and just let all that tension go. Good. All right, now let's transition into a quick check. Since we're on the ground, let's just see what that did to our active straight leg raise. So arms down to your side, lock your legs, tuck your toes, and let's bring one leg slowly up as far as you can. And let's do both sides. So you should have in your mind, hey, that either felt better, worse, or indifferent. You should be able to assess how that felt. And again, we're not going to necessarily go around to everybody, but that's what we might do in you know, a seminar with just a couple people, is just make sure that, hey, did that work for you or not? Now, I'm just curious. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and stand. So I want you guys to make sure you're standing properly in spine health mechanics and all that type of stuff, right? So you're not, you're not rounding your spine. So now that we're upright, let's just do a global check to see how that 45 to 60 seconds worth of breathing impacted our squat. Go back to your squat stance. Grab that pretend broom handle. Give me the deepest squat you can. Good, and you should be able to sense, wow, that either felt better, worse, or indifferent. Now, as you're going along with this, keep track of what does impact you positively because you're going to want to include that within, you know, maybe preparing for cardio, maybe, you know, strategic movement, all this type of stuff that, that you're doing. So that's that first one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add things in, right? We're going to add things in and see how it impacts you. So we're going to get a little bit more. We're going to build on this just a little bit more at a time. The one part that I want to go into next is a broad category of myofascial preparation. And I'm going to blow by this because I don't want this to be about a myofascial preparation seminar. But I want to make sure for those of you who want to do a deep dive on this, this is awesome stuff. So you could absolutely take a lot of this myofascial, these, these tools, and go through them. Uh, so, for instance, I've got a little foam roll here, right? So I could do, you know, myofascial prep for my glutes and my quads and my hamstrings and calves, and and I could use, you know, I could use softballs and tennis balls to get more into like my psoas, and and I could use a golf ball for my plantar fascia. I can do all sorts of of different things. I can use a stick uh, to do some some other, you know, myofascial things. I could even use, I could even use a muscle gun. This is awesome stuff too. So there's a lot of ways to integrate in myofascial prep. And then what I would do is I would absolutely encourage you to you know, recheck those movements, see if there's improvement. But the nice thing about myofascial prep is it's going to globally help you just feel better. You're going to feel like you're awesome. So I would definitely encourage you to do that. I'm not going to go down that alley. I am going to transition into some RPR wake-up drills. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and go to your back again. Here we go. Making this hands-on. Kind of fun, right? All the way on your back. And we like to include wake-up drills after breathing. So let's go ahead and just get your breath so you're calm, rhythmic breathing. And I want you to go ahead and take your fingers. And this is right from Reflexive Performance Resets, Chris Koferson team. I want you to take your fingertips. And I want you to dig into your sternum, up and down. Dig hard. So that should feel a little uncomfortable. Dig hard. Good. And then bring the fingertips underneath the ribs. And so you're still on your back. But let me go ahead and make sure everybody can kind of see me. But I want you to dig in underneath those ribs and just kind of slice and dig hard. You're lying on your back, so you're you know, relaxed. You're able to get in there. And feel for any tender points, any tension, and just continue to dig. That's a diaphragmatic wake-up drill. We could take every wake-up drill and in between do the reassessment, but that's going to take us a little bit more time. Let's just get through the wake-up drills and see how it affects us. So next, let's find your belly button. You're still on your back. Find your belly button. 
go one inch over, one inch down, push in at a 45 degree angle, put the other hand on top so you can dig down deeper, and then give me tiny little circles with that hand. This is a psoas wake up drill. So you should be on your back, you should be relaxed and breathing, and you should be digging that hand into your psoas to wake it up. Breathe, dig hard. And that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna feel like you find some hot spots in there. Breathe, <laughs> it's gonna feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's go to the other side. Belly button, one inch over, one inch down. Push into 45 degree angle, uh, and breathe, good. The psoas is super important, guys. Just wake it up. Breathe, dig hard. That's it, excellent. So that's wake up drill four, so as. Next up, let's go thumbs. We're just gonna do zone one for, for those of you who, who, who know wake up drills, we're just gonna do zone one, it's just super quick. Um, take your thumbs and put in the back of your head at the base of your skull. And I want you to dig in laterally. That's it, dig in laterally. And within our sessions, you know, it really depends on whether we're doing private sessions or if we're doing our performance program in groups. But when we're doing our performance program, we generally don't dive incredibly deep into the wake-up drills. We're just like doing some zone one messaging and all that good stuff. But good, dig into that. Good, and that should feel awesome, right? You got some, some discomfort in there, but it just feels really good, like a deep tissue massage. Breathe. So that's gonna wake up your glutes, believe it or not. If you, if you haven't had any muscle testing done, do a pre-post on that one for the glute. It's awesome. Uh, and then the last one I want you guys to do is you're still on your back. I want you to bring your legs off the ground. I want you to karate chop the inside of your legs hard. Karate chop hard is an abdominal wake-up drill. Good. Do that for like, I don't know, 10 seconds, whatever, 15 seconds, whatever. And maybe hit the outside as well. I, I kind of personally like that. Not part of the, the wake-up drill system, but okay. Whew. That's a little workout, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's go back to, now that we've included some wake-up drills, let's go back to your assessment for milestone number one, which is the active straight leg raise. So arms down to your side, legs are locked, tuck your toes, and now slowly bring one leg up as far as you can. Good, and let's do both sides. Keep the leg locked, don't let it bend. And take a little self-assessment. Did it feel better, worse, or indifferent? So ask yourself that, right? Did, did the wake up drills help you? And for me personally, I felt impact, positive impact with the breath. I always love myofascial prep, so I'm sure that would have helped. And then I felt better with the wake up drills too. So I'm hoping that you sense that potentially, that hey, you know what, that helps me. And if it's helping you on something like this on the active straight leg raise. Just think about how it could help you on other things as well. So, um, so it's it's really cool. But just knowing your body, what it's you know what it's responding to, and and this basically personalizes the approach. So next up, after breath, at, you know, and the wake up drills, we like to get into some neural resets. So let's go ahead and dive into some of this. Now this is another system from Tim Anderson Original Strength. There are five neural resets. First one is breath that we've talked about. Uh, head nodding, hip rocking, rolling and crawling. So let's go ahead and hip rock. So I want you to bring your knees comfortably wide, chest is proud. And you know, I've got my shoes off, so we recommend training out of your shoes so that your, your muscles and your feet can actually be strong and stable uh, and mobile. Uh, and now what I want you guys to do is extend your arms and just give me that hip rock back and forth. Add in the hip rock. And you should be able to feel some you know, some mobilization of the hip here. Should feel kind of good. I love to add in a head nod with a regular hip rock. So from here, I would do eyeballs to the ceiling at the top, chin on your chest at the bottom, and just go back and forth. And of course, you're breathing and trying to just relax the body. When you're ready, bring your hands in a little bit, and let's go one leg directly out to the side. This is a little single leg hip rock, chest proud, and now get into that back and forth excellent and you should feel that big time right in the adductor area right in there good and you can do whatever you want with the foot you know coaches will cue this differently um you know whether you bring the toe to the ceiling or whether you bring it forward and keep the heel flat i mean just do what kind of feels good we're really trying to just mobilize the hip in here good let's hit both sides of that and breathe and get the best stretch you can here, guys. This is this is awesome stuff. It's it's like a dynamic hip mobilizer because you are moving. Good. And from here, next up, let's go to a quick 
little. And there are, there are a zillion different ways to do all these guys. I'm just, I'm just introducing them to you. Uh, and also the beauty behind the milestones is that if you have deficiency in, let's just say, a milestone, like milestone number one, there are so many different ways to potentially correct it and a lot of different strategies. So no one's right, no one's wrong. What is important is to identify what impacts you or the person that you're working with positively. That's the most important part. So different concepts, different strategies. doesn't matter what works. We just want to find out what works, right? Um, so next up, now let's go to a pigeon pose. So tabletop, bring one leg off the ground, slide that other leg up and through, and chest proud. And now you're going to feel that front leg glute. And the reason why I'm doing this is, yeah, it's a great you know little stretch, uh, but I love the side to side head nod with it. So that's where we're getting into that neural reset of head nods because people who are well move their heads and necks and breathe. Good. And remember, our focal, like the focus is feeling good, right? The focus is not getting a body beat down. If you want a body beat down, go for a few sprints in the parking lot. That will feel very challenging. Good, but it may not build your body up. <clears throat> Not saying sprinting is bad. Sprinting is very good as long as you are prepared for it and you've been doing smart things. Sprinting is the highest form of movement. Most of us aren't even capable of true sprinting, which is why we tend to, uh, anyway, that's another hot topic. All right, so we got some head nods in there. That should feel awesome. So we've done some breathing, which is that first neural reset. We've done some head nodding. We've done some hip rocking. And we might as well throw in some rolling patterns. I tend to associate rolling patterns more with milestone number two, but you know what? It's all good. So let's go through a couple little rolling patterns with you guys. So I want you to lie on your back. And again, I'm kind of categorizing all these and then reassessing, but we could micromanage this even more by doing the active straight leg raise between them, but we'll just kind of bunch them all together. Uh, let's bring one leg off the ground and relax your upper body. We're gonna do lower body segmental rolling. So I want you to bring that leg across your body slowly. I want you to feel your deep core muscles engaging and look in that direction and then slowly, without using your shoulders, without using your arms, just slowly roll to your belly. Good. And then from there, Bring the opposite leg off the ground by firing the glute. And I want you to look in that direction. So for me, I'm bringing the, my right leg over and I'm bringing my eyeballs over my right shoulder and I'm slowly rolling. So my upper body is like Raggedy Ann. So that is lower body segmental rolling. Let's go back the same way we came and just stay with that lower body segmental rolling. Super slow. Go as slow as you can and breathe. Good. And try not to cheat. If, that, if that's way too easy, you're probably compensating. Now let's go to upper body segmental rolling. So for instance, if we all stayed together so that I can cue it a little bit more effectively, let's bring your left arm to the ceiling and I want your legs to be relaxed. I want you to bring your head off the ground. I want you to bring your arm across your body and I want you to look across your body and without using your glutes and legs, just use your deep core. Breathe and just use your deep core, super slow. Relax your legs. Breathe. Whoo! That's an awesome roll. Your legs should be like Raggedy Ann. Just relax. Now let's bring your right arm up. Bring it all the way up to the ceiling. And I want you to look at that arm. Use your eyeballs as a weapon. Relax your legs and slowly roll to your back. Good. Let's go back the other way. Right arm is up. Head off the ground. Relax your glutes. Relax your legs. Use your deep core. Super slow rolling pattern. There you go. Good. Left arm is up. Eyeballs. Breathe, great job. All right, so everyone should now be on their backs. And guess what? We, we could, at this point, we could reassess. Now, there's one more neural reset and that's crawling. So you know what we should do? We should probably include that in just because I am covering that as an entire system and I don't want to necessarily leave it out because it is so important. It's in our system, milestone 10, 13 and 16, so it's it's amazing. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to give me tabletop, and I want you to try the best you can to do this. We're not gonna do it for very long, but I want you to try to do a leopard crawl. Now, you could baby crawl, which is just staying on your knees. 
You could bird dog crawl, which is a opposite arm, opposite leg, full extension as you crawl. And there are a bunch of different crawls, guys, but the one that we try to highlight is that leopard crawl. So I want you to load your toes. I want your hands beneath your shoulders. I want you to bring your knees barely off the ground, and I want you to give me opposite arm, opposite leg, a little contralateral crawl, keeping your hips low, knees barely off the ground, and just go for a couple seconds here. Good, let's call that good. That's really challenging. Good enough. All right, let's go back to your backs. And let's get to what matters, which is seeing how that stuff impacted your active straight leg raise. So on your back, arms down your side, keep your legs locked, tuck your toes. Here we go. One leg as far up as you can. Good, and hit the other side. All right, how do you feel? Does that feel better, worse, or indifferent compared to when you first did it? I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like really mobile. I'm feeling very mobile. That is feeling better and better and better for me, but this is you. So you have to determine, okay, was that effective? Did that help me feel better? Was I moving better? And now we're gonna get into the signature active straight leg raise corrective exercise right from Gray Cook, Lee Burton. And we find this to be highly successful for tackling this particular milestone. So in order to do this, we would recommend that you have a cook band. Now a cook band is this little guy. So not required, but it's just helpful. And if you do have a regular band, you can kind of set this up. What we would do is we would set up an attachment point that would be, you know, fairly high so the angle would 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 basically be ideal in this situation. So what I've done is I've set this up. I'm just going to do this. If you don't have anything, uh, that's okay. But just know that you know you might want to set something like this up because this is highly effective. What this is doing is creating stability, which allows for distal mobility. That's the concept here. So with your active straight leg raise, a lot of people might say, well, gosh, the reason why I can't get my leg up to 90 degrees is that I don't have mobility of my backside, right? My hamstrings are tight. Well, that could be the case, but we generally find the issue to be more core-based, more their, their, their deep core stability isn't where it needs to be, so it then requires you know, other things to work for that compensation mechanism. So once we solidify the core and enhance stability, now you give your extremities the opportunity for movement. So that's kind of the concept here. So when I do this particular exercise or corrective exercise, um, I don't know if you want to categorize as corrective or not. I mean, it's, it's part of your workout, right? So especially if you have deficiency. So I'm going to grab a band. I'm going to pull it down to my side, which is then going to engage my core reflexively. I'm going to bring then one leg up aggressively and right back down. And then my arms are going to come up. I'm going to exhale, <sighs> legs are going to come up aggressively. So this is how it would be done. So I've got my, my cook band attached to a point. It's not as high as I would like it, but I'm dealing with some equipment related issues. If I'm close to you guys and you guys can see me. So I've got tension, right? I'm going to bring that all the way down to my side and I'm going to aggressively bring one leg up and right back down. Bring my arms up and right back down. And I might do eight to 10 of these. Right? And I would do both sides, right? I'm going to do both sides of those. Give me eight to 10 of those. Tuck those toes. So if you have the ability to do this or if you're a coach and you're coaching this, this is absolutely money. It's just, I mean, it is, generally speaking, if I'm working with someone, that's, that's a go-to corrective strategy for milestone number one. So most of you may not have that uh, at your disposal. If not, maybe set it up. Maybe try to, try to do it. And then you'd want to reassess to see if there was any progress there. And, and again, for me, I'm just, I mean, I think I'm, I feel like I'm beyond 90 degrees. I don't know. But it feels, it feels really, really good. So, so that's the signature active straight leg raise. Now what, what we'll do is we're going to grab maybe like a regular band. So I think more of you have more of the regular type of band. And I might just grab even a TheraBand, right? Like a TheraBand or, or something like this, these little circle bands. All of this stuff you guys can get you know, online almost anywhere. So I'm going to grab this little guy, uh, a little TheraBand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this around a foot. 
and I'm just going to lie on my back. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this first exercise that we're going to start with. It's just going to be called a heel drive. So what I want you to do is I want you to relax your neck and I want you to get into that active straight leg raise position. Bring that one leg up, get a nice little stretch and then drive that side, that heel down towards the ground. Good. And just do repetitions. Give me that little stretch and drive the heel to the ground. And again, you might do, you know, eight, like, you know, you might recommend eight uh, repetitions. Totally fine. <sighs> Quality is really more important here than, than volume. <sighs> Make sure you're breathing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep this on one side and then we're going to reassess. We could take every one of these and go through a recheck if we wanted to, but that would take forever. So we're just going to cut to the chase here. That's your first one that you could potentially do. There's zillions of things you could do. I'm just going to give you some options. There's a heel drive. Next up, let's do some toe pumps. So let's bring that same leg up. Good. And now just bring that toe to the ceiling and bring it to your, your head. Ooh, wow. That feels like amazing right like big time stretch bringing those toes down good breathe and you might do you know six to eight of those right <sighs> breathe good once you get that little toe pump done now let's do internal and external rotation of the hip so i'm just kind of internally and externally rotating ah and you got to breathe just rotate breathe good you might do six to eight of those <laughs> if you need to take a break at any point in time do it Next up, we might do some circles, right? Some hip circles. You could do them in one way. You could do them in the other. Now, all the while, what I'm focused on here is I'm focused on this core stability. I'm focused on keeping my legs locked and I'm really fine tuning some of these, some of these movement strategies here. Good. So you could do that for a time period, right? You could do that for reps. The next thing that I might recommend Again, you could stop and check, see if that's effective, but let's bring this back leg. I'm just gonna give you a ton of options. Let's bring that back leg bent now, your other opposite leg, your opposite leg, bend it. There you go, now let's bring, you should be able to sense that you can bring that a little higher. Now you can bring that leg that's up a little higher once you bend that back knee. Now from here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and slide your opposite leg down as far as you can. Breathe, good. And let's bring it back up. So those are some heel slides. So you guys got some heel slides at your disposal. Oh, breathe. That should be an amazing stretch. Try to keep that top leg locked as best you can. Try not to bend that knee. Just get a really good stretch. Good. And then of course, this, this last one that I'll show you is now bring that leg off the ground and now you're doing a full leg lowering and breathing. Good. And you could do, you know, you could do six to eight reps with that. You got to really stabilize your core you're going to generally probably to feel more stability when you're doing those types of movements, keep your low back down. So you feel stable. If you do want to stay in neutral, that's fine, but you just got to create stability of your, of your torso. Good. Wow. That, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work on that side, right? So tell you what, let's, let's, <laughs> my, my, this side feels a lot different than the other side. So let's do this. Let's, let's even it out. <laughs> And let's do the other side, all right? So go ahead and do the other side for me. You guys, I'll, I'll kind of cue you through it verbally, but you know what you're doing. Let's go ahead and lie on your back and let's go ahead and keep both legs locked and let's just go ahead and start with those, those heel drives, right? Just heel drive. <sighs> Shouldn't be the most intense thing on the planet. <sighs> Should feel a nice stretch. <sighs> and let's do like eight of those, right? Good. Once you get eight of those, let's transition that into that little toe. Remember that little toe pump that we did? Oh, wow. That for me is a highly effective little exercise right there. It's not much movement, but it feels like it's doing something. Good. Then you can do that internal and external rotation of the hip. I also get something out of that too. And then do the circles, do those little small circles. Go both directions. Good. And then you can try doing 
that opposite leg bent, get a little bit more range of motion on the top leg, and then slide, do those heel slides with the down leg. Oh, wow. This does a lot for me as well. <sighs> Breathe, pretty intense. <sighs> Good, keep going, keep doing a few more of those reps. Good, and then when you're ready, give me that last one, which are both legs up, and bringing the leg lowering. You could also use a wall right here, but it's it's kind of like, and also some of you might actually eliminate the band and just do a completely active leg lowering. Good, so you're somewhere between the completely passive, which is a wall, and a completely active, which is just holding a leg up there. Good, okay, excellent. So let's do this. Let's let's wrap that part up and let's go back to our let's go back to our reassessment, right? So here's your active straight leg raise reassessment, the same thing we did when we started. Milestone number one, the foundation of human movement. Arms down to your side, keep your legs locked, tuck the toes, and now bring one leg up as far as you can. Is there any progress with that range of motion? We are looking for at least 70 degrees to be proficient with milestone number one. If you're at 45 degrees, you're not proficient. If you're you know, at 90, you're, it's ideal. But we want you at least at 70 degrees, all right? At least 70 degrees for a proficient, from our standpoint, a proficient active straight leg raise. If you're a one on the scoring, for those of you who are coaches or certified in functional movement screening, if you're a one, you're obviously deficient. If you have imbalances, there, that's an issue. Uh, and if you're two, you're proficient, and if you're three, you know, it's, it's ideal. So, good. All right, so let's do another little segment that is kind of very similar, but also a lot of fun, right? We're trying to have fun with movement. It's kind of cool. So uh, let's go ahead and, if you have like a kettlebell or a load, you can absolutely use that in a second, but I want everyone to experience what this might be like without like a tool. So I want you to go find a wall, and, and, and in terms of how you guys are watching this, I don't have a wall like within this screen necessarily, so I'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna pretend like, like maybe like my dowel right here is a wall, right? So imagine, imagine that it goes straight up and down. All right, so I'm gonna get a few inches away from the wall, right? And from here, what I want you guys to do is I want you to go ahead and put your hands on the wall and I want you to push against the wall so you can feel your core activate, right? This is like bracing, right? So this is gonna embrace your core. So push up into that wall, breathe. And now from here, what I want you to do is extend one leg down, keep one leg up. And now what I want you guys to do is I want you to go ahead and give me that leg movement that we did initially. Good, so try that, try that movement. Good, push so that you feel your core working. Keep the breathing. It's like concept is breathing behind the shield. Good, and you can do a variety of things, but before we do that, let's bring in a tool for those of you that have tools. So you can absolutely stay with the wall, stay with the wall if that's all you have. If you are a little bit more, let's just say, I don't want to use advanced or not advanced necessarily, but if you have kettlebells or if you have some kind of tool like that, you can now do an arm bar, which is very similar to using that wall. So for instance, I could bring that kettlebell in and I could just arm bar, shoulders packed, crush the bell, and now I'm in that arm bar and that also is going to engage my core as long as I'm crushing that bell, right? So that, that, that really, instinctively engages things when we start using tension. So from here, now I've got that same thing that we just did, right? So now, and, and let's, for those of you with the kettlebell, let's just say if it's in your right hand, you, my recommendation might be bringing your right leg up. Good, so now you've got that leg lowering, breathing. Those of you who are against the wall doing the same thing, excellent. Your opposite leg, you can bend. Next up, let's go ahead and start making some modifications here. So, you've got that kettlebell on the arm bar. You're getting some really nice shoulder stability work. Let's bring that leg that's straight up and let's go ahead and do those, those little toe pumps. Ooh, and breathe. There you go, there's that toe pump. 
with a little more core stability here. Breathe. Good. How about that internal and external hip rotation? Breathe. Continue to crush the kettlebell. We got a lot of things going on here, don't we? A lot of good stuff. Good. How about some circles, some hip circles? And breathe. I don't know about you, but my shoulder, and this is only eight kilograms, my shoulder is feeling this. My core is feeling this. My hips are feeling like this is a lot of work going on here. Good. And let's add in something a little bit different. Now, actually, actually, before I go there, let's go ahead and go to the opposite leg. We could do that heel slide. We can bring in all of those elements just like we did before, right? All of those elements could be added in. Good. And breathe. Excellent job. Now, you could potentially go next level with the leg, right? You could add, now this is a next level thing here. I've got extreme stability and I've got this active straight leg raise lower. I mean, it's just a beast. Everything's feeling a little fatigued, but I'm going to add in one more for those of you who are feeling like, Hey, wow, this is awesome. Bring that opposite, that, that leg that's straight up and bring it to the side. Now try to maintain stability of your torso as well as make sure your hips don't come off the ground. But now we've got that side movement with the leg. Wow. A little adductor work here. Whoo. Breathe. I'm going to start sweating here pretty soon. Breathe. Good. All right. And I'm going to call it good just because whew, I'm going to get out of breath. I won't be able to speak to you guys. Wow. So that's a great little segment. Let's, what do you guys think? Can we, can we spend a couple seconds and do the other side? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the other side as well. That's a lot of stuff there. That's <laughs> like amazing. All right. Let's do the other side. Do what you, you know, what you can do. I'll try to verbalize through it. And then we're going to recheck that active straight leg raise. Okay. So I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to halo this around my head, right? That's all, that's all strong first stuff. Again, another system that we follow strong first. And, um, you know, you want to make sure that if you are using a kettlebell that you're using it intelligently, you know, I hear this frequently and it's, it's, it, it's a little bothersome. They're like, well, a kettlebell is dangerous. Well, no, kettlebell is not dangerous. A, driving a car, if you don't know how to drive it is dangerous. Yes. Anything can be dangerous, right? So as long as you're using a kettlebell with good form, you understand principles of tension and you know, all these things and you're, you're more than likely going to have learned it from someone who is an expert, right? A coach. Uh, so we want to make sure that you're looking for strong fights, strong first certified coaches to educate you. All right. Here we go. So you guys are going to go either to the wall and create some core stability, or you're going to go to the arm bar, whatever you feel is appropriate for you. But let's go ahead and rock and roll here. Do exactly what we did before. If you're a little out of sync with me, that's okay. All right. I'm just going to talk through this. I'm crushing that kettlebell. I'm packing my shoulder. I've got some stability here already. And now from here, I'm going to do those leg lowering movements. I might do like six to eight of those. Remember quality over quantity at this point. Good. I would then do some of those toe pumps and I don't know about you guys, but these toe pumps. Wow. For me, these are, these are money for me. I got to do more of these toe pumps. <laughs> Great. I'm going to do a little internal external rotation at the hip. Breathe. I'm really trying to focal, uh, focus on my core, making sure it's all locked in. I've got my arm bar locked in good and I'm breathing. And then I'm going to do those little circles, those little hip circles. Good. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and bring both legs up and I'm going to go ahead and bring that one leg down. This is a beast. And if you're not ready for this, don't, don't, don't push into things that you're not ready for. We're not looking for pain challenge. Okay. But make it doable. And then that last one is that leg out to the side. Good. And breathe. Excellent. Right to the side. Just do what you can do. Try not to bring your opposite hip off the ground. That's it. Create the core stability. Good. And when you're ready, let's just go ahead and bring that down to the chest, roll to the side, finish where you started. Wow. And then before you guys go anywhere, well, let's, let's go ahead and let's reassess this, right? We got to see the impact. So let's go ahead and lie on your back. Oh my goodness. I need a couple seconds to take a break. Arms down to your side, lock those legs, tuck the toes. Here is your active straight leg raise. Let's go. Hit both sides. See how it feels. What do you think of that? Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, I don't. I want. I, I don't want to say I feel like a new man, but I, I kind of feel pretty good. I, that's. Let's, but that's a lot of very targeted work, guys. This is so strategic. It's not even funny, and we're using systems where these individuals have spent lifetimes of effort to give us this. We are obligated to use things that work. We shouldn't be just doing arm curls and bodybuilding and sport-based logic. We should be absolutely diving into what works. Spine health, uh, functional movement screening and correctives, uh, uh, wake-up drills, neural resets, and strength. I mean, all these things have systems of passionate professionals. I encourage you to get into those systems. Really super cool. Uh, our system just happens to harmonize all of them. We call our system Move Forward. So it's 21 milestones. Guess the 21 boom name. And boom is behavioral optimization online motivator. So, okay, back to action here. So you have more than likely experienced progress already compared to that first assessment, right? which is cool, right? We want to identify progress every session because movement is wicked. It's awesome. You should really appreciate it and do things strategically. We've got a couple more things I'd like to do though, believe it or not. Let's get upright because we as humans, we are upright, right? We just can't be lying on our back all day. So let's go ahead and stand tall, chest proud, breathe comfortably. And I want you guys to start with this next upright movement or corrective, whatever you want to call it. We mainly call it a dynamic warm-up type thing, but it's a single leg RDL. So chest is proud. I want you to go to a single leg and I want you to go ahead and aggressively hinge, keeping your hips and shoulders in neutral. Now, for those of you that don't have balance, you, you know, might potentially use something that helps stabilize you a little bit more. Uh, we don't love to use that, but if we have to, you know, we need to, but just try to do the best you can, right? If you just have a little bit range of motion, that's great. But notice that I'm hip hinging, right? See my hips? I'm just hinging. That's all I'm doing. I'm not rounding my spine. I'm not getting into ridiculousness. I'm not increasing the risk of injury. A hip hinge is a human movement. You need to hip hinge. So from here, and also, even though I'm upright, like check the movement out, doesn't the movement look very similar in terms of the body positioning to what we've been doing on the ground, that active straight leg raise, right? It's awesome. So go ahead and give me like, you know, six to eight repetitions each side. And I would encourage you just to stay with the same leg as you go through this in a very slow and deliberate manner, aggressively hinge. Good, give me both sides. Take your time with this. This is gonna challenge anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your fitness level is. This is gonna challenge everybody. This hip core sequencing is incredible. This all transitions, guys, into loaded patterning. It transitions into single leg deadlifting. It, it, it transitions into even more incredible options for you. Okay, I'm just curious. I'm curious. Now I'm curious. Now, right, this is cur I'm curious. Let's go ahead and just see how it affected our active straight leg raise. Get back down there. Let's check it out. Legs are locked. Tuck the toes, right? This is kind of fun playing with movement. Let me see how it feels. Wow. Now, I'm not an incredibly mobile guy, but I feel like I could just like bring my knee to my mouth. It's amazing. There you go. So you would determine if that was helpful for you or not. The last thing that I want to do, well, maybe not, I, don't, I might have a bonus one, but let's just do uh, one more that's on my list. I have another one that I'm thinking of. Um, and let's do, this is called an airplane. Let's, let's do this. Go back up. Come, come stand back up. This is a fun little exercise. If you, you know, if you don't have your balance too well, you can do this in a couple different ways. You could grab that dowel, not my preference. You might just want to use your opposite leg. So if you don't have your balance, we're going to do exactly what we just did, but we're going to modify it slightly. So if I were to bring my back leg back, do you see how I'm still hinging, but I'm like balancing with my back foot? So, so that could be something that, that, that you do, right? An option. But what I want to do is I want to bring you guys back to what we had just done with the single leg RDL. And now from here, I want you to bring your arms to the side. Now we're like an airplane. Now what I want you guys to do is I want you to tilt one direction and tilt the other. But guys, when you're doing this, I need your shoulders and your hips to be in the same plane as you just kind of like tilt, right? From one side to the other. You're gonna just really focus on that. So do the best you can, but it's not just your shoulders like 
tilting, right? It's just not your hips. Your hips aren't going to be square, and then all of a sudden your 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 shoulders go. Bring everything, bring it all into a slight rotation. So let's just practice that. Chest is proud. Give me that single leg RDL. Bring your arms to the side. Good. Now you've got this airplane, and now from here, just slight tilt, kind of bank to the side. Good. Wow. You can go both directions on that. Wow. That should be an animal again for anyone yeah and if you can't do that don't be afraid to use your back foot as balance and then just just practice that same thing with your back foot and a little bit more you would need so so just practice that one that one's an incredible exercise really great a for anybody but even high level athletes do just working on that stability the mobility that's needed for all of this stuff is incredible. So super, super high level stuff. Let's just spend, can we spend like 20 more seconds doing that? Come on, I, 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 I wanna do it. All right, so do both sides, spend the next 20, 30 seconds doing that. Get your stability, do whatever you need to do for balance, even if it's a dowel, if you need to use a dowel, that's fine. Woo, so cool. Try to give us a few repetitions of that. Oh my goodness, so cool. So tell you what, you know what I'm gonna say. Let's check it out, test it out. Let's see what impact it had on the active straight leg raise. Here we go, see how it feels. I mean, I can't believe this, but mine, mine even feel better they even feel better like that one I felt that one was an amazing change all right now I got one bonus for you guys so this one this one might be for those of you who are maybe a little bit more advanced go back to your cook band if you have it and uh, bring the loops to your feet if you don't have it just watch it's kind of fun right bring the loops to your feet give me like a square with the band bring the arm straight above here now bring one leg up and the same arm up and just go back and forth or you can do reps on the same side doesn't matter but this this can be really intense now I'm working my upper body I'm working my core whether you bring those legs both of them off the ground or whether you do one at a time I mean this is just an incredible little exercise that just is I mean that's a monster that's a beast whoo so guys we know for sure that your active straight leg raise is now off the hook, right? I mean, it's just, if you are in milestone number one, we have just given you, uh, I mean, a full arsenal, right? You have now a, a book that you could like change the world because remember, 50% of our society is obese. Now, that's the projection back in 2019 by that Harvard Public School of Health, right? They said, hey, we're projecting it by 2030 50% of our society is going to be. Well, you know what? That was before a global pandemic. I think that's our reality today. I absolutely think that's our reality today. Based upon my experience of working with people, it's a problem. That's number one. Number two, like I already told you, 80% aren't doing the minimal. So guys, doesn't it make sense that we absolutely crush milestone one? Like let's crush milestone one. Sure. We want to get everybody walking and doing cardio and all that. But if you're doing strategic movement, you want to stay injury resilient. You want to set yourself up for success metabolically. If you want to like look, feel and function your best, then milestone one is absolutely in your crosshairs. Milestone number one. So that has just given you an incredible arsenal. If you're a coach, coach it help people. If you're a member, if you're a non-member, if you're just anyone, that's where you want to be. Milestone number one, because it's going to set you up for every other milestone. And let's just prove that. So let's go to milestone checks, just like we started with, right? We did some global checks. We also did some other milestone checks. Let's just see how milestone one work affected other milestones and global things. So go ahead and stand for me. Yep. Stand tall, neutral spine, breathe calmly. And when you're ready, let's go to milestone number two, which is that single leg stance for 10 seconds. You should have some stability there, right? Do that for 10 and then go to the other leg for 10 and just hold that there. 
Now, does that feel better, worse, or indifferent compared to when we did it initially? You're going to have to ask yourself that. For me personally, that feels a lot more stable. I feel so much more dialed in to the deepest parts of my core, and that's all attributed to all the reflexive core stability work that we did. Everything. Now, all of it is great. There might be some that impact you more than others because that's the level of personalization that we're looking for. Um, next up, let's do that toe touch. Now, let's just see how that toe touch feels, right? Same thing. Does it feel better, worse, or indifferent? Mine feel better. You know, now, is there a warm-up effect? Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Is it better or not, right? If you don't have your toe touch, work on that. And you will want to work on all these milestones, but this particular seminar was about really safely, right? Safely and in a smart way, like moving, moving your body. And that's milestone number one. Now, lastly, let's do that squat. So let's give your squat stance. Let's grab that broom handle or pretend broom handle. Give me the deepest squat you can. And does that squat feel better, worse, or indifferent? I'm going to argue that it probably feels better across the board because I know for me personally, it does. So guys, I mean, I'll stay around. I'm going to go ahead and shut down all of our live uh, streaming that's happening, but I'm going to you know, answer any questions. I'll stay around. Look for you know, information from us all about milestones, guys. There are 21 of them. It gamifies the system. They're evergreen, and it's a super great way to systematically approach body and mind transformation. So glad you guys were here with me. Uh, I appreciate you guys. And let's just make sure that we're smart. And I encourage all of you to stay strong.